A Story of a Country That Got Isakai'd. Chapter 60, First Skirmish. Written by Carl D. Great. Kingdom of Jiniana, City of Jacina, Pantera Palace. For the past few days the new Jinianaean army were cleaning up any imperial stragglers to the east of the country. A sizable force were believed to have retreated towards Sharon under the protection of the de Lasland some brave or crazy enough, who stayed are being dealt with at the moment. A Cardonian commander said as he briefed the Cardonian regent and the newly restored Jinian royals. The Cardonian army have been assisting the newly formed army. Archesian translators were key for these seamless communication between the two countries. It is all right your highness, it is better to dedicate your strength and resources in re-establishing the kingdom. We Cardonians have enough men to cross the border to Sharon. The Cardonian regent argued, there are many things to fix on Jiniana and yet their king is fully insisting, that his troops would support the Cardonian in their upcoming battle with the de Laslands. With or without the backing of the Azalians, Cardonia is determined to kick out the de Laslands from the island. It would certainly serve as a strong message that the country is not fucking around, and is determined to even take the fight to the de Laslands beaches all because of a damaged boat. The crown prince is using the momentum to immediately achieve their goals, a blitzkrieg to prevent a prolonged bloody battle of attrition. Once they got to that point he knew that public support would probably turn sour against the whole idea and of course securing much-needed resources Cardonia desperately needs. My prince, the Sharans have suffered long enough, as our brethren we can't stand the fact that another nation is going to free them. Please take my army with you and together we would crush those de Laslands. Argued the king. His top generals behind him are visibly showing immense support to what he said. A few interviews with the locals revealed that, compared to what they have gone through within the hands of the Imperials the situation of the Sharans with the de Laslands couldn't be even compared. Ever since the Empire seceded the current puppet government of Sharan to the de Laslands, the Sharanians were treated harshly as slaves. You have to understand your highness, Jiniana is in no position to immediately wage war. You have tons of more pressing matters to take care of, leave it to us your highness. Calmly said by one Cardonian general. Besides, we are continuously transporting men and supplies, and with Azalea getting involved through conducting a naval brigade, it would be only a matter of time before we could catch up on one-to-one -one ratio with the de Laslands at Shrens. But as if we need to, you saw firsthand how terrifying that is no? Assured one Cardonian Navy Rear Admiral. Pardon I still insist in supporting the campaign, heck. I'll even volunteer to the front lines, argued the Jinian king, he is clearly determined. Later that day an agreement were reached wherein Jiniana would commit one division of its newly formed army to the border to the northeast, while Cardonia would march east, they would be forming two large prongs. Kingdom of Sharon, town of Bratal, near the border, 6 p.m. The cries of a young woman echoed inside a de Laslan outpost. Look at that voluptuous body, what a catch private. A de Laslan soldier said as he lays his eyes on the naked defenseless woman. The Darn village were hiding such a beauty from us. You should have ordered us to kill them off lieutenant. Replied the de Laslan private. Easy, easy private, the local lord wouldn't be too happy about losing a sizable source of his income. Well we will definitely enjoy this woman and the sight of his lover going nuts. Exclaimed the de Laslan officer, the soldiers erupted into laughter as they look at the direction of a man tied in one of the posts. Hey Mr. Pathetic Lover, why are you hiding such a beauty from us? Huh? Asterisk thud asterisk. The de Laslan officer asked as he punches the poor man in his stomach. He was left coughing between the clothes tying his mouth, through his garbled voice, it can be make out that he was cursing at the de Laslan officer. Ha ha this is exciting. Please watch US as we have our way on your girl huh? Taunts the de Laslan officer as he grabbed the woman's breasts, the man can be seen desperately trying to untie his self. Hey, What? You can't do a thing about it. Pathetic, said the de Laslan officer as his hands caressed the woman. A young de Laslan soldier then gathered his courage and confronted his officer. Sir. Are we not being complacent? The Cardonians are just beyond the border. What the fuck private? What? Here you go first. I don't give a fuck about those barbarians. The de Laslan soldier were immediately speechless. Apologies sir. Then he returned to his position. 
Hill 420, 700 meters away from the outpost. Fuck it. I can't take it anymore, a Cardonian soldier shouted as he peeks through his binoculars, witnessing the events at the farm as it unfolds. He then immediately get his radio. HQ. HQ. Come in. Requesting clearance for a rescue operation. Request denied. It is only three hours before the artillery goes off. A man replied through the garbled radio. Are we here to save the Sherinians? This is Squad 6, we will conduct a quick rescue operation. Over and out, angrily replied by the squad leader. Are you with me team? Yes sir, of course. Answered the soldiers. This is a small squad of the renowned Cardonian scouts, they are extremely deadly operators and definitely categorized as one of Cardonia's elite. Sniper. Take out those Delaslands, protect TGE civilians and cover our asses. Delaslan outpost. The Delaslan officer began to lick the woman, she whimpers and cries as she gazes upon her tied lover. Her lover helplessly watches the Delaslans began to approach his beloved, ready to have their way upon the poor woman. He was left to tears as he stares upon the glistening eyes of the woman he holds dear. In war, beauty is a curse, mumbles the Cardonian sniper as he gauges his AWM towards the unsuspecting Delaslans. Asterisk bang asterisk. The .300 Winchester Magnum traveling at 850 meters per second immediately finds its way through the head of the Delaslan officer. His brains literally exploded were showered upon the poor woman and four other Delaslans near him. They were immediately thrown into frenzy. Enemy attack. Enemy attack. Shouted one Delaslan soldier as a knocker gunshot echoed from the horizon in which his comrade jerked beside him was sent flying. He took a magnum round to his chest. The bewildered Sherinians, still tied as their positions watch helplessly as they witnessed this prideful Delaslan genuinely fearing their lives because of an unseen enemy. Then the sound of continuous gunfire emerged near them, this has surprised both the Scarens and Delaslans. They were not familiar with this continuous sound of gunfire as their lever action rifles definitely don't make the same sound as what they are hearing. The soldiers inside the outpost were then knocked back to their sense when the sound of continuous gunfire began to creep their way near towards them. Enemy, there they are, the frantic soldiers outside the outpost desperately defended their trenches, but these unseen attackers quickly made their way. The soldiers in the top open outpost hold their cover as the sniper only picks up anyone that dared showed their head. The Sherinian woman cried as the violent battle unfolds all around her as she was tied up on the table, naked and defenseless. With their HK 416s, the seven man group of Squad 6, supported by their lone sniper, breeze their way towards the Delaslan outpost. This is the first direct battle against the Delaslans. And Cardonia is clearly winning. Outgunned by these modern assault rifles, complete with other bunch of gadgets, the Delaslan quickly dwindled in numbers as the fight fight prolonged. Using their lever action rifles and even crossbows, it was still not enough to impede the elite Cardonian operators. On me. On me, shouted the squad leader as he positioned himself to breach the outpost. The Sharesians are on the top floor of the two-story outpost, their sniper confirmed that at least three Delaslan soldiers slipped their way down at the outposts. Unsure if they are not holding any Okka hostages, the Cardonians surely can't frag them out. As such they will go in wick tactical precision. With a flashbang temporarily blinding anyone inside the outpost, the Cardonian operators blitzed their way in and immediately cleared the building. Clear. Clear. After that they were able to rescue the two Sherinian lovebirds. With the artillery barrage imminent, they quickly withdraw towards Hill 420 wherein they performed first aid on the Sherinians. The beautiful Sherinian woman were then dressed with the soldiers' spare clothes. They then withdrew using hums and the two Sherinians were immediately taken to a field hospital where they would be taken care of. That night at 9 p.m., the border of Sharon were lighted off when hundreds of artillery and rockets rained down towards the Delaslan large forts, trenches, pillboxes and outposts. It was a very fiery night and it marks the start of the large Allied advance through Sharon. A clear display of shock and awe, a display of Cardonian might and unbending will.